Summing difference in cascade op amp circuits. First circuit we'll go over today is the inverting summing circuit. And the response is V out equals minus RF divided by R1 times VN1 plus or, uh, excuse me, plus minus RF divided by R2 times VN. Now you can have uh, more inputs than just these two and the way we'll solve it can be applied to the general case of n inputs. So let's use superposition and short VN2. Well, from v previous instructions, uh, we, re we know that Vx equals 0 because we have a feedback resistor, because these two voltages are equal to each other, and they're shorted to ground. And so if this is at ground and this side is at ground, no current is going to throw through R2, and no current will throw through I negative as well. So even though the KCL is I1 plus I2 equals I negative plus IF, I2 and I negative are equal to zero, so we're back to I1 equals IF. And when we use Ohm's law for these branch currents and substitute, we get V out one equals minus RF divided by R1 VN. And in a similar fashion to find V out 2, we short VN1. Now I1 is equal to 0, I2 is now equal to IF, and we get V out equals minus RF divided by R1. And to get the full response, we just add them back together. And so I could have three voltage sources, four voltage sources. Um, maybe four is, is all that you want to have on any one given node. Uh, but that's just a rule of thumb. Well, let's talk about the non-inverting summer. And the response looks a little more complicated. But you can see we have 1 plus RB over RA which might look familiar because that's a non-inverting amplifier gain. And then we have two voltage divisions. Well, where does that come from? Let's use our friend superposition. We short this input. Previously, when we shorted an input it, um, on the inverting amplifier, that value of resistance didn't affect the other input's response. But look, I have the input voltage here, and now this is not at zero volts. These are just e x1 and x are just equal to each other because of RB. And so we really have a voltage divider given by R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times Vn. So Vx1, again, in this, is it's not zero. It's the voltage division between R1 and R2. And then when we substitute that in, we get V out equals 1 plus RB over RA times the voltage division of Vn1. And we can find Vn2 the same way. We short Vn2, but now the voltage division is going the other way. The voltage drop on X1 is across R1. So Vx1 equals Vn2 R1 divided by the sum of R1 and R2. And we, when we substitute that into the gain equation for the voltage at Vx1, we get the full output response of V out 2. And then when we sum them together, we get this response. Now, sometimes we want to not just add signals or add the inverse signals, we want to subtract one thing from another. And this is certainly one way to do it. And we can see that we have Vn1 is 1 plus R2 over R1 and minus R2 over R1. Now where did this come from? You guessed it. We'll use superposition. We short Vn2 and this resistor now um, if this is at zero volts and no current can flow th into this pin then X1 must be at zero volts as well. And so we're right back to our original inverting 
gain equation, V out equals minus R2 divided by R1, Vn1. Now what about Vn2? Well, again, there's no current into this pin in the ideal op-amp case, so there can be no voltage drop across R3. And so, in fact, the voltage at X1 is equal to the voltage at the input 2 here. And then that leads us right back to our non-inverting gain. V out equals 1 plus R2 divided by R1 times V in. And then when we sum the responses, we get back what's very easy to see is a non-inverting gain and what's very easy to say as an inverting gain response. And just so you know, this should be V1, not V2. Now, that equation can be somewhat cumbersome, and this circuit's a little more useful. But let's first get the response and then show you how we can make it more useful. But what I've added is a resistor from VX1 to ground so that there will be a voltage divider. Well, let's go, let's look into this. So superposition for V1. V2 is shorted. And so both ends of these resistors are at ground. No current can flow into that pin. That means VX1 is at ground, that means Vx is at ground, that means V out equals minus R2 divided by R1 times Vn1. Alright, now we'll do superposition for Vn2. Looks slightly more complicated. But again, at this node voltage, it's just the voltage division. R4 divided by R3 plus R4. And so V out is just 1 plus R2 divided by R1 times the voltage at that node. And so when we substitute Vx into V out, we get this full equation. Now, this works as long as this R4 is 100 times less than the Rn of the op amp. And let's now make some simplifications such that R4 equals R2. And then we get this equation. And if we let R3 equal R1, and so Essentially, R1 equals R3, R2 over here equals R4. You can read through the notes a little more carefully, but eventually, after some algebraic manipulation, by setting R3 equal to R1 and R4 equal to R2, we get V out to as R2 divided by R1. Well, when we sum these together, we get a constant gain times the difference of these two circuits. We have to make sure R4 equals R2 and that R3 equals R1. And also as long as this resistance is 100 times less than the Rn of the op amp. Now let's try to put a lot of this together with our cascaded circuits. We should note that because there's feedback between node 1 uh, node 2 here in X1 and the output node in X2 here that these voltages should be the same if the currents are zero and the output uh, open loop gain is infinite. So the way to go about this is if I find the gain of this stage and the gain of that stage and just multiply them together I should get the full response. So V out in this case is minus V4 divided by R3. And the gain here is minus R2 divided by R1. But note, this R3 is connected to X2, which is at a virtual ground because of the feedback and the open loop gain being infinite and this pin being at ground. So this would act like U1's load resistor. So that means this R3 in design has to be greater than 2 kilo ohms. Otherwise, we uh, violate uh, most of the load resistance requirements in the op amps that we've studied. So all we have to do now is substitute it in, and we get V out. Again, negative times a negative is a positive. R4 times R2, R3 times R1. Take that ratio, and that's our output response. 
Now let's try to tie even more concepts together with summing cascading circuits. And let's try to do this intuitively, uh, superposition without a lot of slides. If I set this voltage to zero, then this output voltage has to be at zero. And because of the feedback resistor and this node being tied to ground and the open loop gain being infinite, X3 is at zero. So this is at zero, this is at zero, node four is at zero, X3 is at zero. There is no current flowing through this node and I can just do the cascading that I did on the previous slide, except the resistance values have changed. And so we have R2 times R7 divided by R5 and R1. And we have R7 times R4 divided by R6 times R3.